Welcome back. It is the first day of FSU weather here in the fall semester. It was a very warm day, but here to talk with Paxton here, our student meteorologist, first time on, on the desk with us. Sure it is. It was a very warm summer, Paxton. It has been indeed. We actually broke the record for the warmest summer in Tallahassee in quite some time, and four days broke at or above 100 degrees, and we had about 82 of those days had highs at or above 90 degrees, so it has been quite a scorcher this summer. Yeah, if you were moving in a couple of weeks ago, I guess about 10 days ago now, we had four days in a row with record temperatures. I don't, they don't really keep the records for that sort of thing, but mm -hmm. that was impressive for move-in here on campus. It was it, just sweating bullets. It was not pleasurable for any of us, but hopefully this trend will not be continu continuing for September. It is expected to be a little bit warmer than normal, for the entire month of September, no real cool shots coming our way, at least not in the forecast yet. But besides the temperatures, we also broke the record for the amount of rainfall falling in Tallahassee, and we were below average with only 8.99 inches of rain for this whole summer. And the last time we got that low was in 2011 at 10.9 inches of rain. Yeah, that was the sixth driest here in Tallahassee, and we're starting to slide into drought here across the Big Bend and up into Georgia, especially where there's actually a severe drought starting up there. Oh, hopefully we get some rain because this dryness is not great for any of us. And will this trend be continuing? Melanie. Today's almanac, though, we reached a high of 96, which is well above our average of 91, and not nearly close to our record of 98. Same with the lows. We're a little above average, but our temperatures are going to be dropping because this week the rain chances are going to be on the rise. We're going to be seeing lots of cloud cover, and that is going to lead to a slight cooling of temperatures. But starting into next week, the temperatures are going to increase again, and this is going to be the big player for our rain right now. This is a cold front that is slowly moving from, from towards the south, towards the southeast, towards us. And that's going to be a cooling factor, and we're going to explain later how that is going to affect our rain chances. But now let's take it back to the desk. Why thank, why thank you, Melanie? Frogsicles. So, what do you mean, John? Well, actually, this is a very strange time of year in Alaska. We're the warmer, the warmest time of the year, and there's actually a feeding frenzy go up, going on up in Alaska right now. Feeding frenzy with the frogs. Yeah, there's <laughs> there is a new study out of the University of Alaska in Fairbanks that has actually seen that frogs actually what they call uh, put themselves into cryoprotection during the summer. It's kind of like bears hibernating during or during the winter. Bears they, hibernating. Well. Basically what this means is that the frogs excrete glucose from their skin, creating them, to, allowing them to freeze, but it allows their insides to keep on running so they are alive for up to seven months. Yeah, it allows them to stay hydrated during that time while they were, are sleeping, just like bears do. And it's a good time here because it is so hot to stay hydrated here across the Tallahassee area. Jake, how hot is it out there? Guys, it's been a sizzler today. We've noticed uh, temperatures all the way up to 96 today. I don't think we broke any record. No, we did 98, but we were two degrees short today, five degrees above average, and the low was higher than average as well. But currently, over in the capital city, we're sitting at 95 degrees, even right now, with the humidity 43%, so things aren't too humid out there, but certainly a sizzler of a day. Uh, as we've gone around. Not too much going on right now with the cloud cover, but you see this precipitation band moving in that is associated with a high system or high pressure system up to the north of us that will be making, that'll be a big playmaker in the, com in the coming days. As soon as it moves offshore, we have a cold front that's going to be moving in and stalling out. So right now, Doppler radar, not a, uh, not a lot going on, but if you look up here, you see the high pressure system bringing some precipitation in right now towards our area, and that's what we've been seeing as the big activity maker as of right now, but that's going to be changing over the next few days. And that's just, uh, right up here. It's going to move off towards the Atlantic. We have that uh, flow into our area, and then this uh, front's going to come in and stall. Rain chances are going up, so that's going to be the big story. So rain chances up, but the temperatures will drop a little bit, so that's a bit of a trade-off there. But as we continue to move on uh, over the next days, that's just going to be the story. Rain chances up. You're going to have to keep your eyes to the skies and be prepared for that as we move on. 
Uh, but for tonight, anyway, we're going to be looking at 73, so still pretty warm out there. Those chances, for, chances of rain are actually going up tonight as associated with that rain band we all saw coming in. So uh, winds in the southwest, 5 miles per hour, not a big story there, but rain is in the picture. So for tomorrow, going to be another hot one, 95 degrees. We've got to keep our eyes out for the rain, partly, uh, partly cloudy skies with um, increments of sun throughout. So winds are going to pick up a little bit coming out of the south-southeast as the system continues to move on towards the Atlantic and we start seeing that cold front move in and stall out. Now, for tomorrow, clouds are going to roll in 75 degrees. Keep your eyes to the skies. Like I said, ch uh, chances of rain are going up. We're going to want to watch it. Showers expected by 5 p.m. with all that heat. We're, uh, it's just going to raise our chances to have to deal with that as the day progresses. But if we take a look at the week ahead, 95 degrees on Wednesday as we saw, but then things Dipping right back down to the uh, lower 90s as we go across, but rain chances are going up. So, like I said, a bit of a trade-off, but hopefully we're going to be able to enjoy somewhat milder temperatures along the way. So, for now, we're going to take things out, expand it just a little bit, take a look at the southeast with my colleague Shane. Thank you very much, Jake. Well, we haven't seen that much rain across Tallahassee uh, for, uh, throughout today, but that hasn't been the case around much of the southeast. Let's expand our radar gaze to look at the state of Florida where you see sea breeze showers beginning to pile in across Jacksonville, some are piling in across uh, Tampa and as well as Miami. And there's also quite a bit of rain associated with that cold front we spoke of earlier that are moving across the southeast right now. There they are coming in through the Memphis area, spotty showers, we can follow the trail along the cold front into Tennessee and that's going to stall out across the southeast, increasing our chances of rain later this week, starting tomorrow afternoon. So right now, let's take a look at the current temperatures. And it is a hot day out there. I like the word sizzler. It, was, it re really depicts how hot it is outside. 93 in Tallahassee and 92 in Montgomery, 78 in Tupelo. Wish we were there right now. But they're only cooled off because of the rain they've been receiving. So it's probably really humid out there right now and 84 degrees in Miami, sticking as hot across the state of Florida. 71 is our current dew point, and the higher these dew points are, the more humid and sticky it feels outside. And once they break 70 degrees, ugh, it's just unpleasant outside. So we, and unfortunately, we've got a lot of 70s across the southeast from 72 in Tupelo to 73 in New Orleans. That rain is really hiking up the moisture throughout the atmosphere across the southeast. And unfortunately, that humidity is just raising the current heat index. This is what it feels like outside right now. 101 degrees here in Tallahassee. So we've broken the 100 degree mark and it is a scorcher out there. Carry around the fans, the uh, <coughs> light clothing, whatever you can do. Now, looking at where the water vapor is, and this is telling of where the moisture is moving across the southeast right now, we see all this building across the southeast and over northeastern Florida right now, telling that it is about to get very moist here in Tallahassee throughout the rest of the week. Speaking of the rest of the week, let's look at tonight. 73 is going to be the low in Tallahassee, 74 in Atlanta, and 74 in Tupelo. Pretty average lows for this time of year. And how high will the temperature climb tomorrow? Looking at another hot one, 95 degrees, with an increased chance of rain raising those heat indices along with it. 95 as well in Tupelo and 94 in Little Rock. And now it's time to send it back to the desk for another story. Why, well, some people enjoyed their Labor Day weekend and Labor Day yesterday. Not others were as lucky in Michigan and Kansas. Yeah, there were a couple of tornadoes, actually two touched down, and the National Weather Service is still doing some surveys to see if there's any others in Kansas and in Michigan. Exactly. And of these two tornadoes that touched down in Michigan, they were EF1 tornadoes and the tornado that touched down in Kansas. We're not exactly sure what the strength of it was since it has not been determined, but we, all we know is that one tornado did touch down. And with all three tornadoes, there were no injuries, which we are happy to report. Absolutely, and actually there was quite a bit of hail, so there wasn't even any damage reported, so to speak, uh, to cars or houses, which is a problem this time of year for some hailstorms. Yeah. And if you do happen to be in an area prone to tornadoes, it's important to put your car inside and all of that because you don't want to pay for the damage associated with all of that. Yeah, there, it, 
as of this afternoon, there was a little bit of severe weather up in uh, the northeast and into the mid-Atlantic states. Casey, do you have any information on that? Yes, let's go ahead and talk about first the temperature across our nation right now. We're sitting at 96 degrees in the Dallas area, even warmer as we have toward desert areas like Phoenix, 106 degrees in parts of southwest Arizona at this hour. Now, temperatures down toward the southern regions, we have 87 degrees in New Orleans, 85 degrees up in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, your heat indexes indicate the heat and the filling of this to your skin. 102, very, very warm to your skin up toward areas like Dallas. Same in San Antonio and Phoenix as well, 102 degrees. Now, getting down toward areas in the southeast, it feels a little cooler. Atlanta, only 85 degrees. But New Orleans, 95 degrees. They haven't really seen too much rain, but areas around Atlanta have got into some moisture activity and some rainfall this afternoon. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that radar. We see that there were some nasty storms that were making their way out of Missouri. Last night, in fact, there were some nasty storms, even a confirmed tornado in Jefferson County, Missouri, near St. Louis. Didn't cause too much damage, but still an impact in those communities. Now down toward our area, we have seen some showers that I'll talk about a little bit later on in the weather show in northeast Florida that are making their way towards some of our eastern counties. Now water vapor imagery does show the moisture content in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And we see that in the dark green, that really indicates a lot of moisture in these communities, talking about New Orleans, Memphis, also down toward northeast Florida, Jacksonville as well, very moisture rich areas, meaning there is a lot of moisture in the upper levels and that's generally translating down to the lower levels in the form of precipitation. Now that future cast rainfall, we'll just go right by that, but you see we'll see nice temperature, I mean, nice rainfall totals in areas that need it across the nation. 79 degrees tonight though in Dallas, down toward, back toward home, 73 degrees here in the metro area, and tomorrow we'll see 95 here across the Big Bend region. But right now we'll go ahead and take a look and that second local forecast with Paxton. Thank you, Casey. Well, currently there is not much going on in the atmosphere right now, and we have some pretty clear conditions. But as this week moves on in the next couple of days, this will be changing as the clouds roll in, the rain rolls in, and we have a more active sea breeze at for tomorrow and the next few days as compared to today and the past couple of days. Water vapor is showing that it there's little to no moisture in our atmosphere right now as compared to what it was earlier this morning and earlier this afternoon and all that moisture is drying up so it's quite dry out there. It's currently 93 degrees in Tallahassee, 102 degrees in Quincy so it is kind of hot outside. It's a sizzler, it is scorching and although summertime is over these summertime temperatures are sticking with us so it's going to feel like we should be having fun in the sun, but we're actually inside with hitting those books. We do have a cold front coming down from the north and it will turn stationary tomorrow around 6 a.m. And this front will continue to move in, to move to the south once it becomes, once it's not stationary anymore. And these, this front is bringing in some scattered showers and some thunderstorms, making that sea breeze more active than what we've been comparing to for the net for the past several days and more rain will be continuing especially tomorrow morning and throughout that day tomorrow for beach and boating it will be a good day to go for the beach and the, it'll be a good day to go to the beach it may be cloudy the rain may be there but the waves are nice there's not much chop so but be careful the uv index is at 11 degree or at 11 so make sure you bring your sunscreen and bring plenty of water for the beach, we have surf at one to two feet. Again, reiterate, reiterating the point of 11 on the UV index. So make sure you do bring your aloe, your lotion, whatever you need to keep yourself from getting sunburned because that's nothing anyone wants to enjoy. For tonight, we have a low at 70, 73 degrees, mostly cloudy, and the rain chances are at 40%. And this rain will continue throughout tomorrow, like I said. And for tomorrow's forecast, we have a high of 95. These high temperatures are sticking around to the mid to upper 90s, but we will get back down to the lower 90s as the week progresses onward because this rain will be providing a little bit of cooling relief, not much as to what we want, maybe the mid 80s, even the upper 80s. We're still gonna be in those 90s, but 
is much better than those high temperatures we have been experiencing. For the next week, like I said, we have temperatures ranging in the low to mid 90s. Those will be persisting 40%, 30%, 50%. So they will be moving on. So just bring your umbrellas and hope for the best. Have your rain boots and all of that good stuff. So Shane, what do you, or Shane and Jake, what do you think about this weather? Well, Peyton or Paxton, that was a fine look at the local segment, but let's talk about the tropics for a minute. We're still in tropical uh, you know, hurricane season right now, and right now we got Tropical Storm Dolly to talk about, actually. We do indeed, and we're happy to tell you that Dolly is not much of a threat right now. It's a tropical storm, and it is weakening, is it not? Uh, very disorganized. It's having a hard time. I mean, so disorganized, I heard they're having trouble tracking it. So, but it is still a threat, at least in t if not in terms of winds necessarily, in terms of rainfall. That's right. In fact, if torrential rains hit mountainous regions in Central America, it can cause dangerous mudslides. So everyone wants to be safe about that. Now, an interesting comparison between this year and last year, Dolly is only our fourth named storm of the 2014 season. And last year, we'd already had seven at this point. Yeah, last year, this one, we were dealing with the G storm, Gabrielle, but in the alphabet at least, but right, uh, we have noticed a smaller quantity, but some of the storms we've had to deal with have been stronger in strength. Yes, that's right. We've had two Category 1 hurricanes and a Category 2 hurricane, which is more hurricanes than we saw for uh, all of last year. But now let's take a look at the southeast, and we're going to see uh, the Florida radar right now, which, as we spoke of earlier, is indicating primarily uh, sea breeze storms right now. The uh, We're seeing those storms come onshore around Tampa and Miami, and we're going to take a closer look at all of these in just a moment. Here we're looking at the Panhandle, and we've got some strong clusters of storms near the Pensacola, Mobile, Escambia County area. But now let's take our gaze <laughs> southward towards Tampa, where we've got some locally heavy rainfall moving offshore right now, associated with that sea breeze. Spotty showers south of Orlando and moving across the Lake Okeechobee area and scooting further southward. We see more of the same from West Palm Beach, Fort Myers, and Naples, and then through the Everglades to the west of Miami. Lots of spotty showers and bands moving across the Southern Peninsula as we have lots of convection this afternoon. But it's all associated with sea breeze, the storm that's going to bring us lots of moisture here in the capital over the next few days is associated with this cold front, which is going to make its way further southeastward and then stall out. We've got a stationary front draped across the southeast here, and that's just going to increase our chances of rain. We're calling for 40, 50 percent throughout the foreseeable future, and we're just going to have, that means scattered showers and thunderstorms, so that doesn't mean it's going to be raining all day long, but it'll be on and off and that's exactly why you want to carry around an umbrella and a poncho and rain boots if that's your sort of gear. Just have the umbrella stowed in your backpack as you head off for class tomorrow morning. It won't be raining when you hit the road, but it should start picking up by lunchtime, so you want to be prepared. Now, exactly how much rain is going to fall? This map tells us a little bit about that. Right now, we've seen less than a tenth of an inch of rain in Tallahassee, but watch this number climb as we get through the next few days. See getting up to a quarter of an inch by noon tomorrow, and check out those numbers skyrocketing in the south. Miami and West Palm Beach could be approaching two inches of rain by this point in tomorrow, So, and getting into Thursday. So looking at that combination of sea breeze and uh, stationary front, it's just going to call for a lot of rain. So be ready for flooding, turn around, don't drown. So look at how hot it's going to get tomorrow across the state. 95 here in Tallahassee, and we're the warm spot for the state of Florida, believe it or not. So we're looking at 90 degrees in West Palm Beach and Miami with increased cloudiness, not a completely sunny day throughout the southeast. But before we get there, we've got to get through tonight, and here's what the lows are looking like. 73 in Tallahassee, 76 in Tampa, 75 in Fort Myers, and that's very seasonable for this time of year. And another season to speak of is hurricane season. So I'm going to hand it over to John for a look at Tropical Storm Dolly. It's that time of year, and typically Labor Day is one of those holidays that can get washed out, out along the East Coast due to tropical systems that are moving around. And fortunately for us here in the United States, we've only had 
uh, four storms, and only one of them actually caused some delays across the East Coast, and that was Arthur way back on July 4th, on Independence Day. That storm moved up the East Coast and through the Cape Hatteras area. Dolly is our Labor Day storm, and that is south of the border right now. The Hurricane Hunters were out earlier this afternoon in the western Gulf of Mexico searching the storm. They actually found that Dolly had decreased in winds from 50 to 45 miles per hour in the latest update. You can see Dolly in the western Gulf of Mexico just off the coast of Veracruz there. And that is expected to push off towards the east or off towards the west into inland Mexico. Could drop six to ten inches of rain in some spots, upwards to a foot of rain in some spots, <coughs> especially in these mountainous areas of inland Mexico over the next few hours. This will no, be no harm to Tallahassee. It's well more than a thousand miles towards away from Tallahassee here in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Winds again at 45 miles an hour, and the hurricane hunters are out there searching this storm, and they'll be out there throughout. Uh, much of the evening. This is expected to make landfall uh, late tonight into early tomorrow morning as a tropical storm. Really not expecting a whole lot of intensification out there uh, on the west coast because of all of this land. A lot of that thunderstorm activity is off towards the west. This will be a huge rainmaker for inland Mexico. Again, upwards of a foot of rain in some parts of inland Mexico. The hope is for those of you in Texas, we may see some rainfall up into the Texas area, especially southern Texas, from Brownsville up towards the Del Rio Valley, and up hopefully up, into, uh, up towards Austin, where they have been very dry as of late, much drier even here than here in Tallahassee. September is a prime month for hurricanes across the basin. We usually see a couple of storms in the Atlantic. And actually, we started off this month yesterday with no tropical cyclones anywhere in the world. That's pretty rare for this month. Uh, and we're expecting a couple more storms later this month. We can't really tell where they're going to form or where they'll, where they'll go right now. But this is the general trend up, up towards the western Atlantic and into the Caribbean and western Gulf of Mexico. All of our storms have been in the Gulf of Mexico or the western Atlantic and trending up towards the east coast west of the Bermuda Island. Here in radar, you can see most of that rainfall is well to the south, but you can see a couple of rain bands pushing into south Texas. And there's another tropical storm that is off the west coast of Mexico, which will provide some extra moisture for the Mexican mountains over the next couple of days. Back here in Tallahassee, we're looking pretty dry for right now, but there is a rain band moving in from the east coast that will move in towards Tallahassee. But no tropical storms are on the horizon right now. But Labor Day is very normal for tropical cyclones around the world. Are there any out there across the world in anywhere? Thanks, John. Well, we haven't got any tropical systems bearing down on us right now, but what we do have is everyone's favorite segment on the FSC Weather Show coming back for another year, Today in Weather History. Yeah, I mean, uh, at Labor Day 1935, we saw one of the, arguably one of the most intense storms to ever hit the U.S. that occurred in... Uh, the Florida Keys. That's right. This Labor Day hurricane of 35 brought winds reported of up to 200 wow. miles per hour with tides of up to 15 feet above average and waves 30 feet high. And this was before a lot of technology with tracking storms. So it had a pretty high death toll, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. I mean, just imagine trying to hang on to a car going 200 miles per hour. It'd probably feel something, something, something like that anyway. But yes. uh that's today. That's it for today in terms of weather history. Let's take it over to Casey right now with our last look at the local segment. Thanks so much, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the radar across our Big Bend region. We do see right now there are some showers and thunderstorms starting to pop up and toward areas like Liberty County, down toward areas like Wilma. So depending on what device you're looking at, you can, may also be able to see some of these storms that are developing out towards Suwannee County and Columbus County depending on if you're seeing the whole screen here I have FSC weather but I'll go ahead and make the, a little more obvious and we see that there is the Doppler radar across our Florida area and we do see areas of Suwannee, Columbia County, some showers that are trying to make their way into our western, I mean our eastern part of our viewing circle getting into our areas like Taylor County, also areas like Jefferson County as well so we'll watch those closely here across our region. Now heat index is very high 101 is what it feels like in Tallahassee as of last observation. Even warmer as we get into some of our southwest Georgia counties. Up toward Bainbridge, 109 degrees it feels like. And up, down, down toward Quincy, 104 in toward Gaston County. 
So very warm, toasty conditions across the Big Bend region, but just drink plenty of water and you should be okay. Just stay inside as well as need be. Now, your future cast does so. These sunny conditions in toward our area, but we are going to see some scattered showers and thunderstorms, especially in our eastern regions tonight, and we'll see those rain chances increase tomorrow. A stationary front parked to the north that's going to influence more moisture to occur in our area, so make sure you take your umbrella, bring your poncho as well as needed across your area, as we could see some rainfall. Don't want to get caught in an afternoon thunderstorm without an umbrella. Now, going ahead and take a look at what we're expecting to see later on Wednesday and into Thursday, more of the same, scattered showers and thunderstorms across the region. So again, umbrella needed as well because of that precipitation falling across your area. Also, make sure you stay inside if there's thunder around because lightning is one of the nation's number one killers. So just be careful out there with thunderstorms across our region. Now the UV index is in India is in ex extreme range, 11. So very high, in fact. That, so make sure if you're going out to the beach in, in your spare time, make sure you bring some sunscreen alone and apply that to your skin. Also, water temperatures very warm, 82 degrees. That indicates very warm temperatures. Now, if we're keeping an eye on those, as that does is a key factor in toward hurricane season. So right now we're not really watching anything. So really no systems to take advantage of those warm temperatures. Again, pretty nice night across the area, with the exception of our eastern area, seeing a few scattered showers, 73 degrees. Tomorrow, 95 degrees. A pretty nice day, a little warm and a little bit more thunderstorm activity than you would like to see, but just make sure you bring that umbrella. And in that seven-day outlook, we see those temperatures, low to mid-90s across our region for highs, low to mid-70s for lows. Rain chances stay relatively high across the area. Now back to Shane and Jake. All right, thanks, Casey. And uh, let's take one more look at some uh, local events while we tie things up here. Civility Week 2014, tonight at the S uh, Seminole Uprising Pep Rally, Dick Hauser Stadium, 6.30, right? Yep, that's starting in just a matter of minutes. And we can guarantee you guys pretty good weather for that. It's hot outside, but at least it's clear. Tomorrow, it might not be so clear. We expect rain to be heading well, we have some events at the Oglesby Union. Yeah, we got Ask a Director coming in. You can you know, get answers about the Union, the Campus Rec Center, uh, things like that. It's going to be 11.30 to 1 p.m. Yes, and there's also ask or thank a professor in that time at the Union. But let's look at the seven-day forecast one more time. Look at warm temperatures, cooling off, thankfully, for the weekend. Yeah, those chances of rain are going back up to 50% throughout Friday through Monday. So Indeed, the rain is here to stay. But if you like us, you can follow us at Twitter and Facebook and watch us anytime at Livestream.com slash FSU Weather. Yeah, we appreciate you guys tuning in for our first HD edition and our first uh, show of the year this year, huh? Yes, and we look forward to an awesome year to come. I'm student meteorologist Shane Pendleton. I'm student meteorologist Jake Taylor. We appreciate everything and uh, hope you guys have a great night. Yes, uphold the garnet and gold. Oh, yeah.